I've been off for six weeks, and I have to say at this point from the outset, Nick, I owe my life to the NHS. I wouldn't be sat here, really. I Genuinely, I wouldn't be sat here today if it wasn't for them, for the doctors and nurses who, who treated me. Six what was the date you fell sick? So I fell sick on the 6th of March, and it started waking up on... It was, uh, it was Friday, going into the Saturday. I started with aching limbs, flu-like symptoms, but I could generally do normal things and you know i could i could still eat and i could still um i could go for a um uh, i was at home but you know late at night i'd go for a walk just mm. to try and do a bit of exercise and it got progressively worse through the course of that week um and and i noticed towards the end of the week i was having trouble breathing so the cough started five six days in and it got progressively worse um but when it came to the point where I realised I was in real trouble and I needed help, was it felt like I was drowning. It was felt like somebody put a clamp around my chest because the coughing fits, all I could... I couldn't clear my chest. All, all I had was fluid. It felt like I was just... Water was just sitting there on my lungs and I was unable uh, to breathe. And uh, I, I remember my wife saying, well, you know, we're talking, what should we do? And I just said, just to call an ambulance. I mean, I mean dire trouble here i don't know i can't breathe and I'd, I'd been to the toilet and i'd pretty much collapsed um afterwards from a coughing fit i was coughing up blood and alex and pete turned up the first responders these guys were in their early 20s and they came in and it was pretty clear early on just from the initial test that the the, the number they they all the doctors didn't you know seem to take very seriously was oxygen saturation levels and they should be between 94 and 98 um, percent, but mine were right down. And that's the amount of oxygen when you breathe what it in gets at? into your. They, they were going down into the into the 80s, right. 70s and 80s, and they were they were they were too they were too low, and they immediately gave me oxygen and in my in my living room, and that was um, that didn't come off my face for five days. That that same oxygen pipe, and they took me into the Royal London Hospital in Whitechapel. And I remember being at the entrance to the section of A&E, which is uh, cordoned off for COVID, COVID uh, patients, and just feeling this intense fear of what was to come. And I went in, we, we were taken inside and uh, I had a chest x-ray and they said, you've got pneumonia, both lungs. And it was one of the fears they had at the time was there were blood clots on my lungs, which could travel to other parts of my body and and kill me fortunately that turned out not to be true but um it was it was it was a very scary time but within two and a bit hours from being in my living room i was in a separate room on a ward it's an isolated room on a ward having been treated with antibiotics i mean that's incredible two hours diagnosed course of plan treatment plan organized in a in a, in a room and it was a it, it was for about two and a half days where it was just... Were you conscious all the time? Yes. I mean, it was quite difficult. It was, it was, I wasn't fully... I was a bit out of it. Yeah. It was very difficult. It, you have sort of snapshots in your own mind of what you go through. Um, at, certainly at the beginning, it was, it, was, it was hard to be conscious of everything that was going on. And, um, and a, so a lot of a huge amount of sleeping but you're 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 not you're not with it were your family able to visit you uh, my wife was there at the, at the beginning yeah she was there at the beginning but after that no and and that's that was that was terrifying but i had so much love you know how much love i had from the lbc listeners and and from from people well, in westminster from, me, from really. fresno <laughs> you, you sent me a text i think I you said actually. you said hang in there mate and i sent you a text back saying doing my best yeah. and i really was doing my best to stay alive i very rarely text <laughs> anyway so you're very you want to keep <laughs> okay, that, lucky i'll keep that one for posterity <laughs> but they were but the the ner you the doctors didn't know how, didn't know how to figure it out, and they were cha changing the antibiotics. I was on three different types of antibiotics, and then I had another. Then they they weren't working, so they upped it to a different antibiotic. But the nursing, Nick, from the nursing, from Sister Jane, who looked after me, she looked after me like she'd look after her own son. This woman, this woman was just incredible, and 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 nurse Sitsi, and they'd come in, and you're looking emotionally you're looking for a life raft your life you know a month earlier i've been playing football on the beach with my son in the south of france kofi 
And at 38, you know, I'm relatively, sometimes you see me in my cycle kit. I'm yeah, relatively, very, cycle to and from I, I, you know, I'm a relative. Seen, there's no weight on you at all. I, I, you cycle all the time. You, know, you I'm don't a relative, smoke, do you? No, don't smoke. No. Um, you know, I'd, I'd got to a point where I could, you know, I, I never thought this, I'd be in this position. And suddenly you're there and all the power is taken out. You're helpless. And the nurses came in and they never made a mistake. That was the incredible thing. I was on... Four Which different tries for of, you when you consider your but, line of work. But 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 it's incredible, isn't it? When you think you, you're you you know you ha, you set a bar about what's a good breakfast show, and when it falls below, there's some shouting going on. I set a bar about what I think is a good political report, and I sometimes fall below that. What I think is a good political report, and your listeners, whether they're joiners or electricians mm. or, or what, nurses. whatever, or nurses. But the thing is about the NHS, they never made a mistake in six days. They always got my... There was never a confusion about my drugs. I had um, various wires coming out of me. Maz, who took my my blood, um, came in. He took my blood. It, this guy drew blood better than Dracula. I mean, it was incredible. He j he never missed a vein. And when you're in... When when everything is falling apart, you rely on these people. They're, they're just incredibly talented. And they found a way through for me. And did I got over that... Kit? Did they have enough kit... Were they wearing what the sort of masks so, that we've seen so now? So they weren't. They didn't have face visors. No, they only had the face masks. Um, Proper they, ones, though, with ventilators, not no, the ones you get from Wix. No, the ones you get, the, the, the ones that you, you. They only had the face masks, and 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 it and it's playing. It's playing on my mind that mm. I, that these people could be ill because they were treating. They, they were now very ill because they were treating me, and they they robed up outside, and then they came in, but they never once. Nobody ever complained. They, they were just this incredible resilience, this strength in the way they treated me. So when you think of the personification of the NHS, it's probably, is it Sister Jane? Sister Jane. I mean, Sister Jane was, uh, and, and Nurse I mean, they were just, they were phenomenal. And they came into the room and, and you knew you were in, I knew I was in, I knew I was getting the best possible care. They were brilliant. They were so, they were so calm and collected and, and they were always. I couldn't. I could. I could barely speak. Nick. I couldn't get words out. I, if I, I had to leave my oxygen to go to the toilet, and 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 it was. A, I had a toilet to the side, and yeah. I, and I couldn't. I was just racing to get back to my bed to just put the oxygen in. God. Um, so how long were you at that level of illness? Uh, three and four, four days. It was. It was two and a half days where. Um, it was two and a half days where it was just in the balance, and I just and you're much like the prime minister. He, yeah, he talked to forty eight hours. Yes, it was it was two and a half days, and it wasn't. The, the 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 scary thing is it can go the other way, so you can get an infection in your lungs, and that can become a sepsis, um, an infection in your blood, and that can cause yes. huge problems in other organs of your body, um, and you're just and the drugs they were. The drugs they were trying just didn't work, and you know they they they're figuring it out. This is quite early on. Yeah, indeed. It so was. so yeah. they were figuring so this it is out. Like early to mid March that you're being treated. Mid middle of March. Middle yeah. Of March. So we're a month on. Um, and how long were you in hospital, Theo? When did you get six, out? Six and a half days. Six six days, just under six days. And, and you and I, and I spoke a couple of times, and I hope you don't mind yeah. me saying your voice was very thin, and there was no way you could have come <clears> back on air. No. How how, how long did it take? And so, I, I suggest you take it easy today as well. I don't even want to yeah, put in one of your no. mammoth days. But how long before you actually started to feel you were so I, back in the game? So I did two. I did a. I did a week pretty much of bed rest at home, and then I, then I sort of tried to become more involved. But that didn't quite go according to plan. I got quite a bad throat infection, which is when we spoke, yeah, and, and I you couldn't, couldn't work. Then, I couldn't yeah. work then. No. Um, and then I, and, and that's a warning to anybody who's coming out. Just. Just do the bed, do lots and lots of bed rest, yeah. um, because otherwise I, I took it. I, you know, tried to do too much too quickly, yes. and ended up with a throat infection. That that was okay. I, I stayed at home for that. I didn't have to go back to hospital. It was just a throat infection. So, lastly, Theo, great to have you back on board. But from what you have endured and survived, what's that? What have you learned about the NHS? It is the most phenomenal organisation, and and something that perhaps, and and I, we when I was looking at social media and what people are saying and that's lost or could be lost in danger of being lost is amongst the arguments about PPE and um, uh, testing. It has the most incredibly talented people. You cannot, I received the very, very best care and something that stuck with me was, and it's not a competition compared to different countries and I'm not trying to portray it as that, but I remember 
when things were bad, and something, a quote from Chris Whitty, the chief medical officer, st stuck with me. And he was asked about whether people should travel abroad. And this was in the early days, and I was still working. And he said, don't go anywhere which has a weaker health system than our NHS. <laughs> and and it, just, it just stuck in the back of my mind. And it's not a competition, because countries across Europe and the world are battling this deadly infection. But the NHS is the absolute best. I cannot get over, and I cannot reiterate, how... In the face of such adversity, Nick, how talented, how caring, how wonderful these people are, and I, I did have the opportunity. I, I, I did have the opportunity to just to, to go back, and of course, it's all hermetically sealed now. Of but it is. I did go back. Well, I went to Sainsbury's, and I just got a couple of bags of. I mean, it's nothing. It's, got a couple of bags of shopping of chocolates and bits, and I just took them to one to the A and E and one to the uh, ward, and it's just. It all sort of came back. Just uh, what's a what's a what's a fun size Twix and Maltese is going to do to say thank you? But 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 these 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 guys just this country would be in such trouble now if it wasn't for them. They're amazing. They're incredible, and I owe them well, I owe them my life.